somehow acquired another drift car. We are going to weld up an angle kit for it. It's the passenger side and the driver side. And then this knuckle is absolutely done welding. Car? 164,000 miles. That's like a lot that's of a kilometers. Lot. Yeah, that's mid With 200s. Like, hey, how much kilometers is 164,000 miles? I When I called you and said, hey, this thing only has 160 on it, I didn't look close enough. A little vibration in the wheel. A little. You know what, we're gonna get her tuned up. We're gonna get her tuned up, don't even worry about it. But first step is the kit. Kit is the first step. All right, what's up? Uh, we bought this E46, beauty of a car with some over fenders and we're using it as a developmental car to test fit our angle kits on it. And Josiah has cooked up a new full knuckle design. You saw Rain weld that in the previous video. And now we're gonna throw it on, we have a sweet purple color. We have some rear lower control arms for it too and some other goodies that we're gonna make. Some scanning, some designing. Let's go. It's gonna be sweet. I don't know if these are over fenders or like a roof for a house. Oh, yeah. They're definitely a something. How many inches do you think we have from the tire to the edge of the fender? Uh, we got some some trophy truck fitment for sure. You know. The rear is sick man. Mega stance on this thing. <laughs> okay, Jack, we're gonna work on the car. First step, jack up your car. Second step, take out the engine. Third step, install the dangle kit. Install 12 inch wide VSKFs. Let's get to it. What's up guys, on today's video we're going to show you what a rusty piece of crap looks like. A Canadian car. What's so funny, Doug? Okay, so on this episode we're going to show you what a Canadian E46 looks like. Super rusty, lots of brown, earth tone colors, all natural. What we're actually doing is installing an angle kit. We have made a couple changes to the kit that we're super excited to show you guys. Less adjustment, but more accuracy. You'd still be able to do caster and all that good stuff, but it's a full knuckle design. That's the biggest change. What this is gonna allow us to do is change KPI separate from camber. Usually those two things go hand in hand when the knuckle on a McPherson strut isn't able to move independently. So you'll see what I mean when we install it. And we're just gonna check it all out. We're gonna test drive it and we're gonna see how well it works on our own B46 job test car. Okay, so I probably won't be doing the majority of it. Kyle will be, Jack's gonna be filming. Rain made the kit, Ethan's store in the car and probably gonna drive it. I'm just overseeing it and I designed it, so yeah, enjoy. Let's start, this is some.
Wait, why do you have a rear arm? I said we're going to ignore these oh. incredibly well-designed rear control arms that have the adjustment at the wheel for E36 and E46. And we're going to focus on the angle kit, which is our task for today. Starting with the knuckle, this is what is the majority of the changes. Instead of an adapter that goes to the factory knuckle, we wanted to do some things that were a lot easier to do with a full knuckle. So you're gonna see that it has Ackerman adjustment. The geometry and trail built into this knuckle it is extremely specific. We have a clamping style strut mount for the E46, and then we have a bolt-on style for the 36. This has a slotted design where we can change camber separate from KPI where we can simply remove this pin and then this um, strut mount actually rotates this way and you just put the pin in the different hole to secure it in that place. So you're going to be able to change the camber of the wheel separate from the strut tower basically to put that simply. So that's what the knuckle is. It has mounts for OEM calipers. The knuckle is going to connect to these new lower control arms. The main difference here is that there is no longer any rod ends. It is just specifically uniballs, which are serviceable, snap ring, pull the uniball out. Um, the reason we did this was mostly because between people wanting to adjust their track width and not, more people would rather have a set fixed position where they can still adjust their caster on the car and not have to worry about their track width. They can set the track width, which is non-adjustable, and then they can adjust their camber with their camber plates or with the adjustments here on the knuckle. Also with this kit, we will have inner tie rod replacements with our full 7075 aluminum body tie rods. So this is going to be our new inner body and then the outer, which is already on the knuckle. Right hand thread, left hand thread, easy adjustments, super strong and very serviceable for the inner tie rod where they tend to go, the socket style tends to go quite often. So this is a beautiful upgrade even for products that are not our own angle kits. We've sold these to many people that have different companies products on their car, but our tie rod setup has been proven for a while. So. That's what we're doing today. Kyle's gonna be doing the install. I'm just working and Jack is calling me for, uh, to go over the details. So that's that, enjoy Kyle struggling with uh, the Canadian car, which has a little bit of rust on it. I'm going back to work, so. Okay, thank you. See ya, yeah, see ya. bye. I think I need to go out here. <laughs> Took off the uh, front knuckle and lower control arm assembly and the tie rod, and it's ready to swap over the FDF parts. Okay, what's next? Knuckle, brake, that's it. sick knuckles are sick it's everything that I've ever wanted in a BMW except for the bearing I think I'm gonna make a knuckle that has a 5x114 bearing so what are your plans doing spindle and bearing or just bearing we're gonna do the spindle like the spindle will be the main option I guess if you did want a like we would use a 350z wheel bearing because um, then I can just bolt these on without like an adapter or a spacer and 5x114 is so much easier to find. Can't hurt the BMW boys, they'll uh, sacrilegious for them. But I'm gonna do it because I'm a 240 boy and a Corvette boy, which we re-drilled the rotor, the bearings on the Corvette like within the first week to 5x114. That's what I'm gonna do. Anyways, this is normal wheel bearing. Works great. 
Let's go, let's go test her out. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's see what she can do. That's it guys, thank you for watching. That's the install on our E46 full knuckle angle kit. The knuckle can actually be used on a number of different control arms and other angle kits. Uh, it's one of the benefits that we have designed into it. This car is gonna be used as like a school drift car. We're gonna be implementing our Wednesday night drifts as we did last year. And we're also gonna do like lessons on Wednesday nights that I'm gonna be offering. These cars will be available for like renting or for using in the drift school where we're going to be able to teach people more about how to drift properly, proper techniques, everything else, and I'm going to be running it. So, so up next for this chassis, we're going to be installing the rear arms. We will be making rear adjustable spring buckets for the upper control arms. I'm designing a full trailing knuckle setup for this car as well. That's going to use a bolt-on wheel bearing. We're going to make axle adapters to run different axles. A lot of cool stuff. That's all going to be in videos coming in the future. We're also going to Grid Life next week where we're going to be getting the S14 ready and going to that. So if you guys want to see what we're doing, make sure you subscribe because uh, otherwise you're not going to know and you're going to be missing out. So see you guys in the next one.